this month on America's Neighborhood. But John Smith, in his many travels around the world, did he make up the story? It's entirely possible. One of them had created this map, and it showed these little Indian villages all along the Palisades here. We take a look at the history of Captain Smith and the first Palisadians. Thanksgiving, or set foot on Plymouth Rock, English colonists explored the shores of the Palisades and traded goods with local Native Americans. These East World meets West World events occurred during these very weeks of July, some 412 years ago. That's when Captain John Smith and a small crew of English colonists sailed up the Potomac to explore and map our area. This early 1608 journey took place just months after Smith's famous encounter with Pocahontas and a year after his fellow colonists built the first structures of the English settlement of Jamestown in Virginia. Jamestown was the first permanent English settlement in America. While there were other explorers who previously visited the mid-Atlantic seaboard, Smith was the first to set the name Potomac to paper. Along the way, he surveyed the river from its mouth at the Chesapeake Bay, all the way up to Little Falls, near today's Maryland DC border. Smith and his crew were partially lured to the Potomac by the prospects of gold, trading goods, and the hopes of finding a water passage to the Pacific Ocean and possibly India. But make no mistake about it, Smith's voyage to our area was born as much out of necessity as it was adventure. In fact, many of his fellow colonists were dying. Just some 18 months earlier, Smith was among 104 passengers who left England to find treasures in the New World. But soon they were stricken with disease and hunger. By 1607, only 38 of the 104 new Jamestown colonists survived. This dire need led Smith to explore nearby shores in the winter of 1607, when he traveled from Jamestown to Werewakamako in what would become his most famous among his 20 local voyages. You probably know this story. It's the one where Pocahontas reportedly saved Captain Smith after he was captured by Powhatan tribesmen. Following some time in captivity, Smith was brought before Wahasinikal, the chief of the Powhatan tribe. Smith's head was placed on some rocks, while a Powhatan man raised a club to hit Smith's head. Legend has it, this is when Pocahontas, the chief's ten-year-old daughter, is said to have laid down on Smith, putting herself in harm's way to save Smith during his execution. Captain Smith wrote about these events after Pocahontas' death. Following Smith's tale, the story became accepted as American folklore. For instance, in the Capitol Building's Rotunda, there are three depictions of Pocahontas, including two where she is saving Smith. This story was echoed through centuries of retellings, from books to Broadway, and movies from silent films to animated features by Disney. But in recent years, historians have questioned the credibility of Smith's tale when comparing it to his other writings. It might have taken place, but John Smith, in his many travels around the world, including Central and Eastern Europe um, and the Ottoman Empire, um, had this habit of recording adventure stories in which foreign women would swoon for him and save him from almost certain death. So did he make up the story? It's entirely possible. It was a little more than six months after this legendary encounter that Smith found himself sailing on the Chesapeake Bay. He was again voyaging out to explore and look for food, hoping to trade English goods for corn with the American Indians. Thunderstorms and bad luck characterized the first weeks on the Chesapeake, as Captain Smith and his crew lost one of the ship's masts and there was a water shortage. They turned back south towards Jamestown. When they came upon the mouth of the Potomac, Smith's written description of his trip through the Palisades is uncharacteristically brief. There are just a few pages recording this part of the voyage, even though he spent the greater part of a month stopping at villages of the Nakachtang, the Moya one, and the Talks native along the Potomac shores up through Little Falls. The Nakachtank lived in the future lands of Washington, D.C., with their villages located mostly along the Anacostia and the Potomac Rivers. In fact, the Nakachtank gave us the names Anacostia and Anacostin. Historians point to 19th century maps that show the locations of several Nakachtank villages in our area. One of them had created this map, um, and it showed these little Indian villages 
all along the Palisades here. And that's partly because we are so close to the river here, and especially during the spring where we have these large fish um, migrations that come up the river and spawn, that was very important for the Native Americans uh, to take advantage of this huge influx of protein to the area. Such maps made by anthropologist S.V. Proudfit illustrate several archaeological locations along the shores of the Potomac. These records, along with a large number of artifacts, depict a Palisades area that was once home to a large number of American Indians living in prehistoric camps. American Indians were attracted to the Palisades ancient river terrace, as well as the views of the Potomac. They found this flat area, bound by Potomac Avenue and MacArthur Boulevard, suitable for habitation. Their homes were not teepees, but instead small roundhouses called wigwams, or in larger Iroquois-style longhouses. Other signs of nearby sites have been discovered since. In 1982, the location of an archaeological dig between the MacArthur Foxhall intersection and the Potomac's Three Sisters Rock Formation was listed by the National Register of Historic Places. Artifacts were found at the Potomac Palisades site, which is about an acre in size. Another one was found in 1996, when construction workers near the Whitehurst Freeway found the burial site of a Native American woman with these artifacts. The woman was buried sometime between 640 and 790 AD, according to radiocarbon dating, along with pendants, 14 great white shark teeth, and a comb made from antlers. If you're wondering what type of artifacts might be in your yard, local historian Doug Dupin has been researching and salvaging artifacts for nearly two decades throughout the Palisades, stretching to his Sherrier Place home. It really depends on which street you're on. I mean, anything over on the other side of MacArthur Boulevard, because of, I think, the slope over there, uh, it's a little steeper, things, the artifacts have long since washed away. All along Potomac Avenue, that area generally has artifacts. The three groups of American Indians along the Potomac River and in the D.C. area were all Algonquian speakers who, according to Smith, were hospitable and accommodating at the time of European contact. While other tribes showed Smith and his crew hostility, the Mayoans, the Kochtak and Togues, the people did their best to content us. Captain Smith wanted to continue north past Little Falls, but could not find a way to make the passage with his boat. So he and his crew got out and walked along the shoreline to Great Falls. While they were there, they met some Native Americans and did some trading for bear, deer, and other meat. You want to understand why the people of the Upper Potomac River didn't respond violently to John Smith? Well, it might have to do with the fact that he stopped at the falls. If he had kept on going towards their Massawomack rivals, who lived at the headwaters of the river, he might have had a very different set of relations. Smith and his crew observed that the fish of the Potomac were indeed plentiful, with, quote, fish laying so thick with their heads above the water, as for want of nets, our barge driving amongst them, we attempted to catch them with a frying pan, unquote. This did not prove to be a good fishing technique, so the English colonists drove fish towards shore and then used their swords to spear them. While doing this later in the Chesapeake, Smith was stung on the wrist by a stingray and believed the wound to be grave, so he immediately sailed back to Jamestown on July 21st, bringing the Potomac trip to an end. Smith survived the sting, but he was severely injured again in the seasons that followed by a gunpowder explosion in his canoe. In mid-October 1609, he sailed to England for treatment and never returned to Virginia. Pocahontas was told that Smith died. Jamestown went through a period known as the Starving Time during the following two years, when 70% of the English colony died. But those who survived continued to expand out into Virginia. In 1614, Pocahontas married tobacco grower John Rolfe, and the two had a son, but within their first three years of marriage, she became ill on a trip to England with their family and died at age 20 or 21. Years later, the Nakash tank were devastated by European disease carried by Western European colonists for which American Indians had no born immunity. This disease spread quickly through Indian populations, often decimating majorities of the population and making it easier for Europeans to colonize the new lands. We have some cases on record in which native communities that contracted these diseases lost half and as much as 90% of their population in a matter of weeks. The Nakachtank became more remote in the late 1660s as the epidemic became so deadly and pervasive 
that some tried in a lost in island. Others opted to relocate to a large reservation across the Chesapeake Bay, spanning parts of Mattawaman Creek and Piscataway Creek, according to author and historian James D. Rice. The reservation was established following the Treaty of 1666 for at least a dozen local tribes, including the Nakachtank. Thank you for watching, and please join us next month for another episode. Until then, remember to go out and make some meaningful memories today for a richer history tomorrow.